By 1841, the line from London to Bath and Bristol was open all the way. Britain became a railway land. It was said of him that he could make an engineering epic, but not a sonnet. His career was always the center of controversy. Few civil servants or bureaucrats would dare employ him now. He was the most vivid and flamboyant of all the apostles of steam. He was a man of extraordinary imagination, yet he had a complete mastery of the smallest practical detail. It was the beginning of the end for rural England. He completed his father's tunnel under the Thames. He built our first great iron steamships. He designed the Bristol Suspension Bridge. His massive bridge across the River Tamar at Saltash was the most daring of all his works. It seemed impossible. Aristocratic, expensive, and endlessly daring, Brunel began the Great Western in 1835. Great cities of Britain were being changed. His big wheeled, broad gauge engines pounded down the track at 60 miles an hour. It was often the fastest railway in the world. It cost six and a half million pounds and opened up the West in style. Soon the railways drew all Britain into their net. The locomotive, it was said, gave a new celerity to time. It virtually reduced England to a sixth of its size. It energized punctuality, discipline and attention and proved a moral teacher by influence of its example. Sick and near the end of his life, he was drawn across his bridge on a truck it was a tribute, modest in the circumstances, to the triumph of steam. For to Brunel, the Great Western was just the first stage of the journey to New York. The railways were planned so as to keep the works of man in harmony with nature. Though at the time many deplored their presence, in the end few could deny the poetry and the drama they brought to every corner of the land. The men who built the railways were as tough as their jobs. The aristocrats were the navvies. They were recruited from the highlands of Scotland, from Ireland and the sea walls of Norfolk. Britain became a railway land. 